We're going to be changing the fuel pressure regulator in my 1997 Chevrolet Lumina. It has the GM 3.1 liter. This could probably also apply to the 3.4 or 3800s. Go down and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification to get notified of every new video that we put up. Also head down into the comments section and let me know what you think of this video. So before I get started, I'd also like to say that I made a mistake here and I kind of did things out of sequence and if you keep watching here to about midway through the video you'll see what I'm talking about. So I completed this without having to take off the throttle body but let me tell you it's a lot easier and I probably should have taken off the throttle body. All I did was loosen some of the uh, cruise control cable bra uh, bracing right here just took off those two bolts and I slid the ratchet right through in that little void right there in the space and it caused some problems for me. I kept hitting the throttle body housing and I hit it, hit the cruise control and it just took a, a long time and it was kind of painful. I probably could have saved myself probably about 15 to 20 minutes if I would have just taken off the throttle body. But needless to say it's a I think it's a T30 a bit and it took me quite a while but I was able to back it out and then unloosen it by hand. So I'm going to pause it right here. So you can see here's where I made my biggest mistake. The fuel rail was still pressurized and I should have depressurized the fuel. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go behind the power steering pump and take maybe a cup or a hose or something, attach it to that Schrader valve and see if you can uh, bleed the fuel off to depressurize it first. There's still fuel that's going to come out but it's not going to be squirting out like that. I mean you don't have to because you see how all I did was just pulled away from the fuel rail uh, a couple times and it depressurized and all the fuel spilt out. I would say though however when you start up your car make sure all the fuel has been dried so you don't want to start a fire or anything. Okay with that out of the way we have to take off this screw here we have to detach the fuel pressure regulator off of its housing right here so the fuel line is actually kind of flexible and it has some uh, play space with it you can pull it up here and pull it out of its little cubby hole in there and then get a couple pliers you can ruin the uh, your old pressure regulator no problem get some pliers and twist in the opposite direction you're gonna wanna twist the bottom pliers in the counterclockwise direction and then the top pliers in the clockwise direction to be able to get this off so once you do that you just wiggle it off the little hose there and you see that little lip you want to push the new one all the way down to the bottom of the lip and then take the nut and then screw it back on. Once you have this hand tightened you might want to get your pliers again and then tighten it by just holding the pliers on the nut and then holding your hand on the fuel pressure regulator. You don't want to damage the, the new regulator so just make sure it's tight enough and I was able to tighten it enough that in the end when I started back up there was no leaks. You can see here the PCV valve. That is the black tube that's kind of bent and put into the crankcase. I took off that little 90 degree elbow, moved it out of the way just to make it a little easier. Attach your vacuum tube to the top of the regulator. This, the vacuum pulls a diaphragm valve inside the regulator and allows fuel to go into the fuel rail. Next you want to put your screw back in to attach the regulator to the fuel rail and then comes the painstaking process of trying to get this back in. I'm going to speed it up again. Like I said in the beginning, it's probably best to take off the throttle body to be able to make this job a little bit easier. However, as they say, hindsight is 2020. So once you have this screw all the way in and you want to make sure that the regulator is very snug against the fuel rail, you can go ahead and take off your ratchet and then attach the PCV valve make sure the vacuum tube is on tight and make sure this evap line is still connected to the manifold and also last but not least you want to make sure that the cruise control bracket is back into place before you start it back up you want to do a couple things and check and make sure that you're not going to have a leaky fuel system so just like the fuel filter video you want to turn the key right before the on position you want to allow the fuel pump to engage and then this pushes fuel into the fuel rail. Now you can check to make sure that there is fuel in the fuel rail. If you remember the little clip I showed you earlier, go behind the power steering pump, click the little Schrader valve with a screw and then you're good to go because there's fuel in the fuel rail and no air coming out. 
So it starts up and it's good. Press the gas a little bit. Make sure you have fuel going into the engine and then you're good to go. If this video helped you out, I'd ask that you share it on your social media pages and with some of your car repair buddies. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification, head down into the comments, leave a like, and thanks for watching.